morning, everyone. So um, about myself, uh, my name is Mian Ching. I'm a, a PhD in mechanical engineering from University of Pennsylvania. Uh, that was um, about six years ago. And then uh, I started uh, in Comso uh, as an applications engineer, basically doing technical support. And then about three years ago, I moved over to technical sales. So right now I'm in charge of audio accounts at MIT, Harvard, and um, at the entire Illinois, and part of Rhode Island. So um, basically, the um, uh, professor of this class, uh, Chi Chi, he said that um, uh, he'll be traveling for this week, in, as you know, and he wants to um, um, basically uh, that part of the class may have a project that's based on Comso. So he's like, why do you um, or don't you uh, introduce Comso to the students? So uh, the purpose of today's lesson uh, is basically I'll be talk over um, how to use Comso, uh, what's the capability of Comso, what are the modules. Um, and uh, also how to uh, uh, build from the very scratch, uh, how to create a geometry, to how to set up the physics, uh, how does the measure works, and then the solver, then the post-processing. So I'll try to go into a little bit of depth into each of the building steps, like what are the options, um, but I won't go into too much details of the, um, you know, what's, uh, how the solver actually works. So it'll be a little bit different from what you uh, typically have in, in, as part of this lecture. Um, so um, uh, feel free to ask questions, but as I said, uh, raise your hand first. Uh, so I have on the cover slide a link, uh, demo.com.com. Uh, so that is a, a place that uh, we host a lot of different application examples um, that you can basically log in with the username and password that I created for you. And then you can launch any of the apps and uh, test it later on. So I'll send out the slides later so you're going to have all this information. So uh, a couple words about the company. So Comso is essentially, the software itself is essentially an uh, equation solver uh, based on finite element methods, at least 95% of it. Uh, and then it started in 1986 um, as a distributor for MathWorks in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and then uh, the, the CEO actually started, the, uh, he himself is a programmer and an engineer, so he actually started something called a, um, a PDE solver for MathWorks. So that MathWorks is actually still selling in the States. And then it became a standalone software called SamLab, but it still actually requires MATLAB to run. And then it was renamed as Comso Multiphysics, uh, and it's completely standalone. And right now we have derived many different modules for different application areas. And um, um, so we have uh, about 22 worldwide offices. Um, I myself am from Burlington, Massachusetts, not too far from here. We have the other couple of offices on the West Coast and uh, uh, many distributor networks across the world. So. Um, one of the magazines we brought is the Console News. Uh, we have an annual uh, news magazine, basically a collection of user success stories. So those users may be from national labs, large corporations, uh, or academic environment. So some of the um, interesting stories you can read about what people use Console for. And just judging the book from the cover, uh, you see that it's basically different industry from aerospace, which so relates to Core 16. Uh, and then uh, also oil and gas, automotive, clean energy, uh, those things. We also have another magazine called the uh, Multiphysics Evolution, <coughs> which is an uh, insert for the IEEE uh, magazine. Uh, it's both magazines are actually available online on the Comso main page. So uh, what can Comso do? Uh, so uh, you see that the different blocks here on the honeycomb, uh, the electromagnetics, heat transfer, structural mechanics, fluid flow, chemical, those are a few typical categories of problems people use Comso for. And the missing piece here is user-defined equations. So basically, um, from each of the existing uh, predefined physics types, you can uh, choose a set of equations and start solving for those, uh, which are already made for you. All the um, domain conditions, boundary conditions are in the predefined way. But a lot of times, especially in research environment, people deal with non-standard equations. That's when you can implement your own user-defined equation uh, in, the, in the last uh, uh, column here. So my colleague Tammy is going to teach on Wednesday about equation-based modeling. So he'll talk about more on the equation side of it, how do you do, uh, implement all different types of equations in COMSO. Um, so stay tuned for that one. So uh, the beauty of COMSO is in the core, uh, which is the multi-physics uh, approach. So basically, you can grab any of the physics from any of those uh, letters, and then you can solve them in either uncoupled way, one-way coupled way, or a strongly coupled way. So uh, just a quick view of the product chart. Um, so you always require uh, the COMSO multi-physics, the long blue bar on the very top to run the um, software, which gives you uh, the uh, building steps that I mentioned earlier, the geometry tools, meshing tools, solvers, and post-processing tools, and a few fundamental physics, such as electric currents, electric statics, laminar flow, heat conduction. And then if you want to have access to more advanced physics types, then we have 
the last four columns, um, 20 some boxes, uh, those are the physics based modules. We divide them into four categories. Um, so the first one is electrical, goes from low frequency to high frequency to all the way beyond optics. And you also have plasma physics and plasma chemistry. And then also semiconductor module and the MAMS module that deals with, uh, you know, very straightforward from the names, charge carriers in the semiconductor, how they distribute, or uh, MAMS uh, electrators, actuators, um, uh, sensors, uh, basically has a unique electromechanics interface. And then the second category now is structural category. So you have the, uh, from the linear materials, uh, you can use the structural mechanics module. We have nonlinearity, plasticity, hyperelasticity. You don't have a nonlinear structural materials module. Geomechanics module deals with large scale rock, concrete, soil. Uh, fatigue deals with low and high cycle fatigue, thermal fatigue. Multi body dynamics allow you to solve many different uh, parts being assembled together. Use different joint types in console and solve the rigid and the flexible body how the stress and strength distribute. Rotor dynamics is uh, just released a couple months ago. Um, so it deals with the vibrational um, um, stress in the, in the vibrational devices. And the acoustics module deals with uh, acoustics propagation, basically vibration propagation in uh, solid and also in fluid domains. Uh, then we have the fluid category, I guess, for the uh, course 16 you're most interested in, which is uh, from the CFD uh, module, which can simulate um, from single phase to multi-phase flows uh, to low and high Mach number flows, um, so uh, and also isothermal and non-isothermal flows, um, all different things, uh, and of course um, not many different turbulence models as well. So there's about 11 different turbulence models you can choose from. And then if you deal with a, a mixer, a stir, a stir tank uh, mixer, a baffle, uh, then you can use the mixer module. Then uh, we also have uh, porous media flow capability in the subsurface flow module. Uh, we have low and thin pipes with large aspect ratio. You want to uh, use the approximation of the like a 1D pipe, so the pipe flow module. Uh, Microfluidics module deals with mostly electrokinetic flows uh, and also the uh, um, uh, multi-phase flows. Molecular flow is when you have continuum mechanics fails and then you deal with uh, high mass and numbers, um, rarefied gas flows in a vacuum system. Uh, then heat transfer module, which is um, actually a versatile, very versatile module that can pretty much couple with any other physics uh, that can deal with heat conduction, convection, and also radiation. On top of that, we can deal with heat uh, tr transfer with phase change as well as uh, uh, bioheating and cryogenic cooling problems. Then the last category is chemical, um, so you can deal with species transport uh, in uh, both the diluted sense or concentrated sense, uh, and also uh, transporting both free space and porous media. Uh, when you have electro migration for the charged species, then we have many, uh, a few uh, electrochemistry related modules as well. So I won't go into too much details on the fourth branch. Uh, and then to the right, in the uh, yellow boxes or the orange boxes, you have the, uh, how Comsol works with the third party softwares. So a lot of times engineers already have the design via different CAD packages, so you can either import those CAD geometry and build your equations, assign them to that geometry, or you can um, synchronize the geometry between console and another package and then do it in a dynamic way. Uh, you can also have lively for MATLAB. So how many of you use MATLAB? Pretty much everyone. Um, so everything that you do in console, you can actually save it, the entire file as a .m file. So every graphical command that you did will be translated into an M script. And then you can run it entirely from MATLAB with just the console server in the background. And you can easily add for loops um, and then add different, uh, modify any part of the model. Uh, you can also draw a uh, console from Excel. So you'll uh, be able to synchronize, tabulate data and uh, uh, generate report uh, out of Excel. And then in the green boxes in the middle, you have the uh, multi-purpose module, which is uh, the optimization, which you can uh, define an objective function, a scalar function, um, define what kind of variables can change, what constraints they satisfy within what ranges, then Comso can find an optimum solution for you. Material library is just the database you fetch information from. And then the last one is particle tracing. So two um, common examples is charge particle tracing electrical magnetic field, or um, tracer particles in fluid flow. All right, so any questions on any of the modules? Anything in particular you want to hear about? Okay, so um, with that said, uh, I'm going to um, quickly demonstrate a multi-physics problem, how to build in console and the building step, where to find the different buttons. Um, so uh, have you received the trial download yet? Some of you did. If you haven't had a trial yet, um, leave your email and let me know. 
um, so I can uh, send you the trial installation. So basically, the trial will have um, every box on this one, I think, except for the very last one, the Katia V5 one. Um, so basically, you can explore the package and the mathematical uh, mathematics interface is in the base package. Um, so you can uh, feel free to define your own equation style too. All right. So uh, the workflow in console, as I mentioned, you start always with the geometry by either importing or sketching in console, and then you define the physics. Uh, so the physics include what's the governing equation and what are the boundary conditions. You also use, assign the material properties uh, to the different domains or boundaries or even edge and point. And then you match the domain. That's what the finite element uh, method does. I guess you already went over the finite element method in, uh, as part of the lecture. So. Um, you know that uh, basically discretize the domain and then solve the equation in each of the um, uh, smaller elements and assemble them in a system matrix and feed them to the solver. So that's what that, that does. Uh, and then you solve the model via the different uh, um, uh, solver types in console. There is fully coupled and uh, segregated solver uh, for the multi-physics problems. There is a direct and integrated solvers. And for each of the categories, there is many options. Uh, and then you will have a solution data set you can uh, basically run the post-processing upon. And then uh, you can generate colorful images, uh, generate the tabulized data, uh, animations, uh, whatever you want. And then the very last step, step number six, is actually you can create uh, one more step uh, based on the model. You can create it into an app. So basically you can customize the app interface and deliver that to your customer, your colleagues, who don't have to know every details of your, how you build this model, but they need to have a few buttons and a few input fields that they can play with. Uh, so basically, you can customize the, the model into an app.